I just watched a clip with Byron Donalds from Florida, a congressman from Florida, and I'm going to play it for you now. And I want you to pay attention to a couple of things. Pay attention to the tone of voice of the woman he's addressing, okay? Her very soft, almost vocal fry description of Build Back Better. And then I also want you to listen to him speak. He is definitely speaking authoritatively about the subject because he knows a lot about it. He is asking pointed questions backed up by facts. And I think he's actually trying to compliment her and pull her into the same headspace he's in as far as understanding. So I don't hear him attacking her. I don't hear him being aggressive. I hear him being assertive, but he knows what he's talking about. Um, and I just want you to pay attention to her responses or rather non-responses or tone of voice, and then pay attention to both the timing of the chairwoman's response and how she characterizes what he has done as creating a lack of decorum. And then I'm going to explain to you what I think all that means. But you, you watch it for yourself. It's about just under two minutes. And then, and then come back and I'll tell you what I think of it. Administrator, can, you, can we honestly have a conversation and sit here that if you do something like child tax credit, which will give people $300 per child, that that's going to make it easier for them to go back to work? Or is it going to make it harder? Is it going to make an economic decision where they're going to make the choice of, you know what, maybe I don't need the additional five hours. If you cascade that through an economy across the 31 million small businesses in the United States, do you think it's going to be easier or harder for small businesses to staff their, their companies in order to be effective for their customers? As President Biden says, we, you know, we, well, we all know President Biden doesn't know much about the economy. We can't we bet against the American people and uh, workers who want to work, who want to have the protections uh, that uh, in place and the, the care uh, for their elders or for their children. Administrator Guzman, affordable. the president of the United States, has never worked a day in his life outside of Washington, D.C. You've done more than he has. Come on now. You are a small business owner. If the federal government was providing outside spending that competed directly with your ability to pay people to come to work, do you think it would make it harder for you as a small business owner, which you were, not an administrator now in the administration, would it make it easier or harder for you to keep people under your employ? Uh, again, these investments in Build Back Better will strengthen our and workforce. I will, I, and if you will excuse me, apologies. the quorum is important in this committee. And Madam Chair, I was, just referring, I was just referring the to the President. The President of the United States is part of that. Madam Chair, the President of the United States has never worked in our economy. Those are facts. That's not about decorum. That's the truth of the matter. He has you never worked a day in our economy. He's always worked in Washington, D.C. To point out that fact and to illustrate the fact that we're talking about major economic policies that do impact the 31 million million small business owners in our country, it's not about decorum. I didn't trash the man. Your I'm time speaking facts. has expired. Okay, so now you've seen it. What'd you think? Because to me, it perfectly captures what I've been trying to talk about today on my Twitter feed about speech patterns, specifically the vocal fry and how it can, you know, whether it's just you being more soft-spoken than is strictly necessary for the venue and, you know, possibly crackling your voice ever so slightly. Um, it creates a sense of I'm a victim. I'm I'm the good guy here because I'm weak and soft and gentle, like a newborn puppy. And that's how she came across. I did not now could you might say, well, Dad, that's her tone of voice, that's her personality, that's who she is. I understand that. But she's talking about paying people not to work using the taxpayer dollars spent or created by people who do work and small businesses and so forth to pay people not to come to work at their small businesses or any other business for that matter. And one would hope she would appreciate the fact that the onus is on her to demonstrate this is a good thing. That defensive posture, being soft-spoken, crackling your voice, talking about that we can't bet against the American people, victim, victim, victim tone, is really inappropriate. 
She's talking about spending other people's money to pay people not to work. It's offensive, actually, if you think about it. And it's, in a, in a very literal way, talking about creating victims of the people who are owners of small businesses, some of whom are also families, right? You know, with kids. Um, and yet, she's making herself sound like the victim to cast the people she's talking about as victims so that we all get into that space of she's one of the good guys and he's just speaking a normal tone of voice appropriate considering who he's trying to protect taxpayers small business owners producers the lifeblood of the american economy and then you hear the chairwoman bang her gavel and say that the president of the united states is part of that hearing somehow, pretty sure he's not there, and that we have to have decorum because he said, well, he's never worked a day in his life and he doesn't understand small business. That's a statement of fact. That's a statement of fact. And it's demonstrably true if his policy is to pay people not to work after two years of people not working and small businesses hanging on by a thread. I think last time I checked something like 40% of small restaurants, family owned restaurants in particular, have permanently closed because of the pandemic. They couldn't keep going. And some of them had been in business for decades. They'd made it through recessions. They'd made it through all kinds of other trials and tribulations. They couldn't make it through paying people not to come to work and then scaring people half to death so they wouldn't go out and eat. And the data is all there. The evidence is there. The help wanted signs, the small business owners begging and pleading for a change in policy to make it more worth people's while to go get a job. And there's no excuse anymore. There's no way the president of the United States is unaware of the impact of the policies to date on small business. The suggestion that they should double down on that and pay people because they have children. People have had children and gone to work to support those children for generations. It's kind of an expectation that you will. Is it optimal that inflation has eaten away at the value of a dollar so now people don't have much of a choice but to bring in a second income and that predates the pandemic? No, suboptimal, I agree, but the way we deal with that, the way we help people is to do everything we can to get the government out of the economy so we have a strong and vigorous recovery that will create the conditions for better wages and better jobs and so forth. But that's not going to happen. And eventually, as Maggie Thatcher was fond of saying, they will run out of other people's money. And then the people who've been led to believe they could stay home indefinitely and not work will suddenly be forced back to work at whatever jobs are available, at whatever wages those people can pay. Because remember, the jobs that are still there will either be for giant corporations who are in pretty good with the government, so if they feel like paying you not much, then get away with it. And small businesses that are left that don't have much left. But you'll have to go get one of those jobs eventually. Can't tell you when eventually is. But these two ladies, aren't really even concerned about it. And they're casting him as the bad guy. He's the bad guy in this scenario. And the way they do it is with their tones of voice and their emphasis on feelings and decorum. When that has nothing to do with this conversation. There really ought not be too much white glove decorum when we're talking about spending other people's money. I'm not suggesting they stand on the floor of the house and curse at each other, but I don't think we need to tiptoe around and walk on glass quietly when we're having these conversations. That What's the value there? What's the value? How do you challenge notions like, we have to do that because they have, they have needs. How do you challenge that and not come off like the aggressor? And that's why they talk that way. That's why they do it. That's why I've been harping on tone of voice and speech pattern all day. Start listening to how people say things as well as what they say and you'll start to pick up on it and don't buy into it. Don't be manipulated. Stand strong. Be authoritative. This congressman held his ground and I'm a fan and I'd like to know why all of these strong people 
these strong men in particular are in Florida. <laughs> Can we have some of them in North Carolina? Anyway, I just had to had to share that with you because I've been talking about it on Twitter all day and feel like, what, 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 why does this matter? It does matter. Pay attention. There's a reason. There's a reason that Judge Kavanaugh is accused her. What was her name? Christine Blasey Ford. There's a reason she spoke the way she did at that hearing. And that was practice. That's not her real voice. Any more than Elizabeth Holmes sounds like a man in real life. You can change your tone of voice. So you can make yourself sound much more serious by tilting your head down like this and not allowing the, your, the air to come out through your mouth, but making it, forcing it to go through this narrow thing. Or you can do the Christine Blasey Ford thing and you can tilt it even farther down. And so you are sounding like you're always a little bit sad and crackly and vocal fry on steroids. If I try to speak normally right now, I can't, but I just have to keep my head artificially tilted like I have some kind of weird neck tick. They do it on purpose and they're coached to do it on purpose. So pay attention and demand that your interlocutor is speaking to you using adult tone of voice. And the last thing I'm going to say in this video is that I really believe the feminization of our culture is killing us. What do I mean by feminization? This kind of manipulative, underhanded, you know, change my tone of voice, make myself sound weak and meek and like a little victim, refuse to be authoritative and own what I'm saying and the full weight of what I'm saying and take full responsibility for it, reside in feelings and emotions distract people from facts, stereotypically, that's a feminine way of getting what you want. It's manipulative, it's driven by emotion, it's sneaky, it's what weaker people do. Physically weaker people do to try to get, you know, one up on people who are physically stronger. It's a game that was played for a very long time probably by necessity, but now women know better. We've had feminism and we know better and we can do better and we have done better, but we're reverting to type and it's gross. And as a woman, I object, I object. I don't want women in positions of power who are making it abundantly clear. They think the only way they can or should use that power is by being a little girl or being a harpy who accuses everybody who disagrees with her of being on the emotional attack. This is a lack of decorum. You're mean. You're being rude. You're not nice. Men tend not to do that. Tend. I've seen some pretty weak men lately too, but it's the feminine side of the, of the coin there. And we all know that by their own declaration, men can be feminine too and women can be masculine too. And I would just like to see each of us be a little more balanced in our traits, especially when we build power over other people. Because when you're in a position of power, you're in power over men and women and children and the elderly and everybody. And you better integrate your freaking personalities and integrate your gender stereotypes, please. Be somewhat authentic as a human and stop putting on this little costume. It's gross. Stop. Yuck. Anyway, that's what I had to say.